Okay, guys, so let's get on with it here. We're going to be replacing the bearings in this 3.3. There's that lovely ERCM pipe, by the way. Anyways, so a lot of people have said, well, hey, man, what do you recommend for bearings? Well, I think I'd already explained that before, that I don't use these fast eddy bearings in any engine for that fact because they are fucking trash this engine is just going to be sitting around for a while so i'm not really too worried about it this is pretty much just only an instructional video since i apparently offended the hell out of somebody last time because <laughs> i guess when i was doing something my hand was slightly in the way for a second and dude had an absolute freaking mental breakdown so i'm going to put my hands right here so you can't see anything while i remove the screws Hand in the way, ass, anyway. <laughs> so, let's see, I think I got one left. There you go. Also, uh, SOS, oh yeah, if I keep forgetting, sorry, I keep offending you, uh, hand guy, Mr. Handjob. Anyways, uh, there's another guy that makes some good content there, SOS Savage. Go check him out as well. He's a decent dude. Oh, it looks pretty good in there so far. And the old owner, Josh, was running Sidewinder. I think he runs... Ugh. I think he said he runs ProBlend 20 or 3010, I think is what he said he runs. He actually doesn't even live that far from where the manufacturer of Sidewinder is. I mean, pretty lucky dude. Also, there's a tiny little washer right there. Don't lose that. This engine's been sitting for a long, long time, so... A little bit of staining, a little discoloration, no big deal. I'm not too worried about it. So we're gonna need a zip tie. We're gonna need some propane propane. Because we're gonna have to warm this guy up because I guarantee you that sleeve is not gonna be easy to get out of there. Mm. You know I have to use a torch. Um, you can use a heat gun instead if you don't feel comfortable because if you overheat it, you know, then you're going to be pissed off because you can uh, melt stuff. There's a guy <coughs> a while ago, or I guess his wife has uh, got his balls in his purse, or yeah, his balls in her purse, rather, <laughs> and uh, wouldn't let him use the oven to, to warm up his block, so instead he used a blowtorch and overheated his block and melted it, so can't stand people like that you're not allowed to do this well guess what i paid a fucking bill so i'm gonna do what i want oh yeah someone else recently you swear too much in your videos well this is the bug 404 if you're offended find another channel i really don't care i'm not worried about it at all freaking everyone's so sensitive these days it drives me nuts whatever happened to people like freaking let's see here Ugh. Wish the flywheel was on, but it's not. There, see if you crank it hard enough, you can get the sleeve to lift up like that. Then what I'm going to do is go from underneath with something that's not made of metal. I'm going to down to the sleeve, so I'm going to try and use a skewer because that's all I got. I don't got anything else. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you push up. There we go. So basically just reach that skewer down inside there until you see the side of the sleeve and just push on the sleeve and it'll lift it up like that. There we go. To reach inside. Get our connecting rod off. And then for the crank. Crank removed. Oh, look at that. I even took the rear bearing out with it. Sweet. And I don't have to do that. There's our crank. This is what I was talking about earlier. So, as you can see, you see that plastic shield right there? That face is in. Inside. So, when you look out, you should only see the ball bearing race. Let's see if that's stuck on that crank, probably. I don't know. Sometimes they get stuck, you might have to cut them off with a zip cutter, but, uh, so anyways, like I was saying, 
You want the bearing to be like this, not like that. See what I'm talking about? Mm, toasty hot. See, when you look through, it should look like this, not like this. And that is important. I can't remember, I think it's something to do with the, uh, holy fuck, almost burnt down my kitchen. Anyway, <laughs> uh, got ourselves a brass brush here to clean up the crank. Do not use that on the piston. But, uh, yeah, let's get that front bearing out of there. I don't want another episode of last time I was burnt down my kitchen. That was freaking awesome. <laughs> that was stupid. So I'm going to take that and just warm up that casting. I'm going to grab myself an oven mitt here because that is getting toasty warm. How hot? I don't know. Doesn't take very long. But yeah, I think it's got something to do with lubrication or something to that effect. Can't remember exactly what it was. And so you can use a pen. Sometimes. Nope, not hot enough. The ballpoint pens don't work that great. <laughs> Give it a little bit more. Like I said, I also don't use fast any bearings. I've had them confetti on me a few times. And, uh, yeah, when they say high quality, low cost, yeah, no, it's high cost, low quality. I won't ever buy their bearings again. They're fucking junk. Absolute trash. There we go. Let's use the back side of my cylinder hone. All right, next we are going to find a pin. I just seen it wherever the hell it went. Oh, there it is. Pink, it's my favorite color. No, it's not. There's a vacuum port right here. Make sure that's clear. Someone was t saying to seal that off, but I don't see what the hell the benefit in that would be. But just make sure that's clear. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the camera around, not burn myself, not burn down my kitchen. Almost did. And we're going to get to cleaning this block here. I'm going to go grab some cleaner and we're going to do that. Back in a flash. All right, we are back. Obviously, you can tell. If you couldn't, well, you're stuck. Anyways. Ugh. Got ourselves some Q-tips. We got, uh, it doesn't have to be hot, hot, but hopefully you guys can hear me. Turn that up a little bit. There we go. Ah, nice and warm. Hands are cold. It's fucking not very warm out today in uh, my area. It is only currently ah, really hot on my fingers at uh, two degrees. So, general rule of thumb is, uh, if your engine's together, like it's complete. Uh, and you want to clean it, seal your exhaust, seal off your carb, take your pull starter off, but leave your starter shaft on, and then spray the outside with carb clean or brake clean, and then use an old paintbrush or a little scrubber brush to get all the dirt off your engine first. So what we're going to use, and someone uh, was mentioning it earlier about super clean being dangerous, well sure it is, but uh, if you're not stunned you won't have a problem. You don't want to use hot water, you don't want to use cold, you want to use warm, but you got to work quick because super clean, this shit, will discolor aluminum really quickly and damage it. But, as you guys seen how varnished the inside of that engine is, I will show you how good this stuff works. It's, uh, you should be wearing gloves when you're doing this because it's really not good for you, but I don't have any. So just, uh, you know, exercise some caution. It's, uh, I got a well ventilated area going on here, so I'm fine, but uh, you know, just uh, use your head, right? Don't be completely stunned. See, look how nice that came out, how quick that came out, just with a q tip. Looks like poop on there. I'm sure it's not, but this engine's actually really not that dirty, so we're just gonna give it a little quick once over here. Just gonna show you. This is a uh, I mean, I, I do so many 3.3s a week, I don't even bother really filming it anymore uh, for people. Because it's just, uh, well, it gets repetitive after a while, but I thought since, uh, you know, I got this here and 
Well, you guys absolutely love my videos for some reason. Or another. Thought I'd share a little cleanup with you fine people. It's kind of a scary thing, you know when you put like a bleach or something on your fingers and they feel, they're not, they don't have any soap on it, but they feel slippery all the time until you wash it for a while? That's the fats coming out of your fingers. That's the stuff eating into your, eating the fats into your skin. It's kind of scary when you think about it. I try not to expose myself to it too, too much, but uh, yeah, you should be wearing a, you should be wearing some, uh, some kind of gloves. You know, obviously be careful if you're latex sensitive or whatever, but, well, I'm sure you would know if you were, but, well, I guess some people don't, but whatever. It's not my problem. If people think I don't care that much, I actually do care about the safety and wellness of others, but, uh, I just don't care about stupid people that are stupid. <laughs> See, look at that. Came out like brand spank and brand new. A little bit left in there to clean up. There's just a little bit left in that uh, crank journal there, so we're just going to take care of that. And a little in there. A little dab on the Q-tip. Oh, propane going so much all over. Get in there and just kind of finger bang that out a little bit. Yeah, nice and easy. Clean all that junk out of there. Nice and like new. See what I mean about the discoloration right here? You gotta be careful with that. If that happens on your bare block, just take a little wire brush action to it and we'll clean it right up. But uh, I talked to one fellow who, uh, unfortunately, he left his engine sitting in super clean, I think it was for a couple of days, and it ate the piston and it ate the block up and it just destroyed friggin' everything. So, it really, uh, really don't want to do that if you can help it. Let's clean up all the transfer ports. Clean inside the exhaust port. You see all that shit in there? Yeah, that's not very good. See that? I mean, that won't really hurt anything, but I mean, if you're going to do a job, do it right the first time. Don't be an idiot. See, just like that. No big deal. Only a couple minutes in there. And you got yourself... A nice, new, tidy, oh, I fucking missed a little bit, that's okay though, let me just get that with a wire brush. You want to make sure the ceiling gland area here is nice and clean too, so your exhaust o-ring seats up nicely. See? That wasn't so hard. Alright, clean up our crank, because you should always clean your crank. Always. Oh no, it's got water on it. It's gonna rust and it's gonna be no good. Nah, whatever. Just stay stupid. Get yourself some more super clean on there. Right? A little bit like that. <coughs> Get yourself your wire brush going. That's a brass brush, so it's nice and soft. Don't use steel, use brass. You won't hurt anything. Well, maybe some feelings, but well, that's besides the point. Brass brush your fingers, it feels really good. Nice exfol exfoliating uh, thing there, see that? Nice and clean like. This is gonna take a couple more minutes here to clean this up, just so you guys get the idea what the hell's going on here. You can soak your, your crank in super clean, it won't hurt that. It's steel, it just, uh, what do they call that there? Sodium hydroxide, it reacts pretty badly with aluminum. You gotta be careful because if you put that in a concealed container with tin foil, like a two liter pop bottle, it'll expand and make enough gases to blow up the bottle. I shouldn't have told you that. Oven cleaner does the same thing too. If you put oven cleaner and tin foil in a two liter bottle, there's some toilet cleaners like that work stuff. Yeah, you can do that. It's uh, pretty fucking dangerous actually, but uh, if you got a little common sense, you'll probably be all right. I've been blowing shit up for years, I still got all my fingers. Yeah, see? Like that. You're never gonna get it, I mean, perfect. I mean, you could if you really are meticulous about things, like, whatever, and you could sand the finish off or whatever, but... 
not really that necessary. Clean up on that crank pin a little bit. Right? See what I'm talking about? Look at that, nice and clean. Remember how that was all that shitty and rusty before? Look at that, like brand spanking new. What we'll do is we'll grab another Q-tip. Get ourselves a little super clean on there. And just kind of finger bang out that crank. You should always clean the inside of your crank because it's centrifugal. So what'll happen is when this thing's spinning at all sorts of RPM, any shit that makes it past the air cleaner will fling on, stick to the inside of your crank. You don't really want that. Especially when you go putting nitro fuel and everything else in there, it can wash that stuff off inside of your engine. Even if you take the back of your engine off, rotate the crank so it's down like that in the block, and then just go in there and just kind of clean it out with some a uh, little bit of carb cleaner, you know, brake cleaner and a Q-tip, you'll be surprised how much shit will come out of there. A lot of people think you just clean it with WD-40 and that it kind of works. It's, you know, it's not really that good. I mean, it, it kind of, you know, I guess better than nothing, but WD-40 is one of those things where it's not really, I mean, it's good for some things, but not really good at everything, how people make it out to be. And I think you're done cleaning up your crank. Clean it some more. Let's kind of get in there and finger blast that a little bit. Some people say, oh, why don't you soak it in nitro fuel? <laughs> you don't even want to know how much that fuel cost here. Uh, 65 bucks a gallon. For like 25%. So yeah, <laughs> I ain't wasting fuel on cleaning parts, buddy. I'll tell you that for free. See? But what if it rusts? Well, that's easy enough to solve. All you gotta do is grab yourself a paper towel, dry it off, right? And then just hit it with some WD-40 to dry the moisture off. That's literally it. I don't have WD-40. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a little of this stuff. It doesn't have to be this brand. Or any penetrating oil and just spray it down. There you go. Won't rust anymore. No problem. Well, the same thing goes with this, right? Just gonna take that, give it a little cleanup real quick. This is what happens also when you plug your uh, exhaust to shut your engine off is you'll get all that shit built up inside your engine. And it'll get all corrosive and start attacking all the metal parts, all the steel parts, and then it'll start to rust. So you always want to run your engine out of fuel. Everyone goes, you can't run it out of fuel, it'll kill the engine. No, it won't. The oil gets left behind, the fuel burns away. It won't hurt a friggin' thing, I promise. Ah, it's just metal staining now, so it's fine. Not too worried about the rest of that. Oh, yeah. Try to get that guy a little clean up, too. See that varnish? Oh, buddy, it just just right it freaking takes off right away. Look at that. Well, maybe it didn't. Like that. It doesn't matter the discolor. Yeah, fuck, it's pretty varnished. Yeah, just like brand new. Really feels good when you uh Stick the wire bristle through your thumb. You know what I mean? That feels feels really good, actually. It really does. It's uh, you know, it's been a while since I've done that, so I kind of became so commonplace, I almost missed it there for a while. Also, make sure that O-ring isn't dis damaged at all. Take your time, dry everything up. Use your heat gun to drive off any moisture. Let's get on to those bearings here while we're at it. You're gonna need a freezer. I'm sure most of you people have them. If you don't, well, I feel sorry for you. 
If you live in the frozen shithole of Hoth like I do, well, just leave your uh, crank outside for an hour. Don't throw away your old bearings either. If you guys got slingshots and stuff like that, they work really good for that. Like I said, fuck fast eddy bearings. I don't use them. This is only for instructional purposes only. That is it. Later on, I will replace them with the bearings that I usually use. But like I said, you get what you pay for with these things. The, uh, what the hell are they called there? Just take yourself a pin. Just pin out that seal. The, uh, what the hell brand are they again? Baca or, uh... Avid and all that kind of stuff, or Acers are good too if you want to use those, if you feel like spending the extra money. So, you need to remove both seals. Because if you don't, you won't get any oil in the back there. I'm going to re remove one from the front. Ah, you piece of shit. Ah, oh, fuck, everything's slippery, hang on. <laughs> there we go. All done. Okay. <coughs> Take our bearings. These are non-directional. Whereas I was showing you, these ones are plastic caged. See that? Plastic cage. These ones are steel cage. Steel cages are better, in my opinion. But, like I said, the factory Traxxas bearings are shitty, and these fast steady ones are also shitty. So, they're, uh, they're not high carbon uh, bearings, they're stainless, and uh, stainless steel bearings are not very good. They're fine in your skateboard and shit like that, but uh, not, not in these engines. So slip on that bearing like that, slip on your other one with a seal side facing like that, throw that in the freezer for 20 minutes. Also, when you're uh, waiting for your crank to calm down, or calm down, cool down, Take your uh, starter shaft here. This is 1,000 grit. You can only see where the one-way bearing sits right here. Just touch that up a little bit. You don't have to, like, you're not trying to really remove material. You're just, just breaking the glaze on there. See that? Just a little bit. That's enough. That's it. And what that'll do, obviously, clean that up. Is it'll break that glaze on there. It'll give a nice new bite surface for the one-way bearing to grab onto. Like when you're rolling your engine over and you hear it like with the uh, easy start. And you hear the easy start spinning and you hear the engine pop, 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 pop. Like that once in a while. It's not really turning over that fast. That's because this is glazed up. Also take your one-way bearing out and clean it with some brake parts cleaner and some Q-tips. And just a fart's worth of automatic transmission fluid. Take Q-tip. Just barely touch it and just put a little bit on there. That's literally it. Nothing more. All right. Let's get some uh, propane, propane, and get this thing heated up. And uh, get those bearings in there. Yeah. It's a turbo torch. That's why it has a weird whistling sound to it. It's one of these type. So, obviously, as you can see, it gives off a pretty big flame if you feed her the onions. So, it's uh, it's an old torch. I actually got it from a buddy of mine a couple of years ago for free. He's like, I don't need a blowtorch. I'm like, well, uh, I do. <laughs> so, I'll take that. So, we're just going to take a minute here. As you remember, there's still water in all the screw holes and shit. So, what we're going to do is just... You fucking idiot anyways just take a minute just warm the block up a little bit it doesn't have to get super hot but it's going to slowly preheat you don't want to just go cooking it right away just take your time with it keep the heat flowing you don't want to just like leave it there in one spot if you, can. you sometimes you have to depending on the situation but not for very long you'll hear all the Moisture start to sizzle out. I had to guess probably uh, maybe around 300 degrees. 
you can use your uh, oven if your if your wife is cool. <laughs> if, uh, she doesn't have your balls in her purse. So water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, I think, or Fahrenheit, I can't remember. Something like that, 100 degrees anyways. So, the water starts to bubble and sizzle. We know we're uh, a little above 100 degrees. I know it seems awful scary. Oh my God, look at all the heat he's applying. Well, don't worry about it. Don't shit your britches just yet. Take a little, little astroglide there. A little in the back. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna grab our crank. Okay, freshly frozen. Fresh, right out the goddamn freezer. It should be hot enough now. Take your front bearing. There we go. <laughs> there we go, front bearing's in. Take your rear bearing. There we go. Give it a little tug. Hopefully you guys saw that. Front bearing's all the way in. Now we're just gonna sit there and just let it cool by itself to ambient temperature, which is in here, maybe 17, 18 degrees, maybe 20 degrees, uh, something like that. Don't go putting water on it or whatever, anything like that, because going from hot, like say 300 degrees to really cold really fast can twist and warp things and you don't want to do that. Now there is an old trick that some people do. Um, I have done it in the past before. Once you get your bearings seated, your crank is all in there nice and good is uh, wrap your engine up in a, in a cloth, like a, a cotton cloth, and just let it cool down really slow. Some people do that, some people don't. I've seen it done over the years. Uh, it's up to you if you want to or not. Um, I don't know, if you feel like doing it, then go for it. If you don't feel like, then don't do it, but uh, just something to think about. Also, the low C 3.4 takes the same size of bearings a 3.3 or 2.5 does. Just in case you didn't know that, now you do. Okay, guys, we're cool enough where we can handle it without hurting ourselves. Right, let's get on with it here. All right, so we're gonna take our Astro Glide, a little in the bearings. Always look before you stick it. That's important. Fuck, this is uh, <laughs> going back a while ago where uh, I'd mentioned about the whole Astro Glide thing and uh, some meathead. Boy, howdy, Captain stuns a lot, freaking goes out and actually thinks I'm using Astroglide to uh, assemble my engines with. And if you guys know what Astroglide is, well, if you don't, I'll tell you. Astroglide's that uh, magical liquid when your uh, old lady's as dry as a freaking desert creek bed. And you want to play around in the old sack there. That's what it's used for if you catch my drift. All right. This idiot went out and decided to go and buy Astroglide to put his engines together and wondered why it went all sticky and dry. <laughs> Just taking a couple of photos here for the RC group. And also, I did take a little bit of um, Scotch Brite, or you can use a steel wool, iron wool, and just clean up off that shit that's on the outside of some hot soapy water. Because oftentimes that varnish will make the sleeve stick in the block. You don't want to do that. So throw a little extra oil here and there. A little on that crank pin. And remember guys, that cutout in the piston faces the front of the block. This way. Like that. Not this way, because if you can see that cutout through the exhaust, you put it in wrong. And it ain't going to run right. I'm trying not to get my hands in the way here so I don't offend anybody. Put our piston in. Sometimes you just gotta reach down there and poke on it. Line up the groove. Bam, like that, like butter. This piston sleeve is worn right out, but that doesn't matter. It'll get rebuilt at some other later date, like everything else eventually. Let's 
taking a few photos here. There we go. Since people are always going to ask, we're going to take our cylinder head and we're going to put that on. These are directional. So we're going to go on this way. Oh yeah, before we go in there, take a little bit of your oil you dropped everywhere like I did and put just a little dab, not much, just a little bit. Don't lose your head gasket to that brass or copper piece because it won't, uh, won't seal if you do that. Stick our cylinder head on there. Take our 2.5 millimeter and I'm going to show you guys again because you guys ask about running screws down and you guys are worried about warping shit so let's uh, get some of this oil up here. So we're going to start with one. You can see that it'll try to lift a cylinder head up in the back. Pay really close attention. See that? See it lift? You don't want to do that. So as soon as it lifts, back it off. Start on the next. And I'll want to lift again. Back it off and keep going around till it till it tightens down a little bit. Then back it off. You want to go even, even, Steven. Shout out to all the Stevens out there. Because if you just go cranking one down after the other, you can uh, unevenly tighten the cylinder head, and it'll always leak. And then just run them down little bit by little bit. In a star pattern. You'll feel them start to snug up. The recommended torque sequence. I have no idea. But it's going to go like this. Click. 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 Click and click. Torque to the factory torque specification. All right, time for the back plate. We got that, and I, of course, probably misplaced that washer again or it stuck to something. For frog snacks. Hang on while I look for it. Well, it appears it has left the building. Anyways, a little freaking. PTFE washer. I don't know where the hell it went, but I've been looking for it for 10 minutes and it has gone somewhere. That's the one that goes right here. That's a spacer for your back plate. So, I don't know, but don't lose it like I did. All right, put your piston down and those two notches right here face up. And then hold your crank, and rotate the starter shaft till you hear it click. Oh, I guess. Oh, there it goes. And that way, hear it? Click. Rotate the engine by the starter shaft. Good to go. It'll be the same process for the back. Fuck, I hate it. It's super annoying when you lose shit. If it goes right there, and all of a sudden, as soon as I put my finger on it, gone. Disappeared in the land of thin air. Like I said, you don't have to crank the shit out of stuff to like to the point where you warp or break things. Common sense. And done. And we got our head protector. Yeah, of course it just shot the screws out of it. Cause why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? <laughs> Run those down. They don't have to be super tight. There we go. They strip real easy anyways. But yeah, there's supposed to be a Teflon washer that goes there. And of course, I freaking lost it. So try not to lose it like I did. But if you guys take a few minutes and you sand the top of your cylinder head down. So it looked like that. And then when you put your cap on there, it looks like that. Kind of look kind of cool actually. It's got like that silver and blue look to it. And that's the best carburetor you can get. The OS11K since the uh, low C3.4 carburetor no longer exists. Anyhow guys, so hopefully you found that interesting, helpful, or entertaining in any way, shape, or form. Or whatever. But uh, 
there you go. That's how you replace the bearings in a Traxxas 3.3 or 2.5 or any engine for that fact. And uh, also, push down on the carburetor before you tighten the pinch bolt. And uh, someone's asking me how to change the position of this arm. There's a 1.5 millimeter screw there. Back that out and you can turn this arm any way you want it. And then just tighten it back up. But anyways, guys, there it is. 3.3 or how to replace the bearings in any nitro engine. Nice and easy. With basic hand tools, including a refrigerator. Anyways, guys, as always, thanks for watching. And keep on burning nitro out there. Later.